Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UI Eats. I'm UI, and it is bright and early, the crack of dawn. Well, I don't know if you can see out the window there. It's not even the crack of dawn, it's pre-dawn. But we are on our way to Las Vegas, Nevada for a series of videos. I'm at my gate a little early, so I'm gonna try to catch some Z's before we board, but see you in Vegas soon. All right, guys, we just landed in Vegas and look behind me. We know we're in Vegas now. Slot machines right out of the gate. I guess they don't call it Sin City for nothing, but uh, you know, let's hop in an Uber. Let's head to our hotel. Oh, actually, before we head to the hotel, let's actually grab lunch. And we're in Vegas, so I definitely want to eat one of the famous Vegas buffets. So let's check it out. I want to hit up this place called the Wicked Spoon. Now the Wicked Spoon, a lot of people say is the best buffet in all of Vegas. Well, I don't know, some people say that the Bacchanal is better, some people say the Wind Buffet is good too, but I really wanna check out the Wicked Spoon. People say that that is the best one for value. Like Bacchanal is like, I think 70 bucks and Wicked Spoon is more like 40 bucks. So expensive still, but within reason. So let's head to the Wicked Spoon and let's go check it out. All right, guys, we are at what I hear is the most heavily recommended buffet in Vegas, the Wicked Spoon, based on both value and price, although some people say it's the best one regardless of price and value. Now, one thing to keep in mind about the Wicked Spoon is they're only open for breakfast and lunch. They kind of have an all-day brunch menu. They're not open for dinner, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, usually there's a huge line from what I hear for, you know, to get into this place, but pretty sparse today, you know? It's, you know, Thursday, it's during the day, so it's an off-peak time. So, you know, usually I might have to wait a long time for this buffet, but it looks like it's my lucky day. So I actually went to Vegas a few years ago, and last time Tina and I ate at the Bacchanal Buffet, and we really, really enjoyed it, although it was expensive, very expensive. I'm not sure if it was worth 70 bucks. It was good, but I don't know if it was 70 bucks good. The Wicked Spoon, fortunately, is more reasonably priced, or at least more reasonably priced by Vegas standards. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. All right, guys, we are finally seated at the Wicked Spoon, and usually there's a big wait. I mean, there was a sign that said that during peak time, there could be an hour and a half wait, but this time, not so much. Uh, I was able to slide right in, and you see all sorts of empty tables behind me. This is a big buffet, not just in its selections, but it's also pretty big in terms of the space of the restaurant. But man, just look at the way I'm dressed. I am not dressed for this Nevada weather. It is way warmer here than back in New Jersey and New York, so off with the beanie and off with the scarf. It is 11.30 here, which means it's 2.30 back in New Jersey, New York. So let's go eat and let's go film discreetly since some of these casino buffets don't like it when you film and vlog and stuff. So let's go. Actually, we just got our coffee. We've been up since the crack of dawn or before the crack of dawn. So uh, complimentary drinks, of course, I wanted a hot coffee. I'm not expecting the world from their coffee, but why don't we give it a whirl? You know, the coffee's not great. It's not bad, it's not great either. It's basically just your very average diner quality coffee. And I don't mean like a good diner, I mean like an average diner. So, you know, it'll get the job done, but it's not amazing by any means. Let's see if milk helps. Okay. I don't take back what I said. It's basically just an average diner quality coffee. But at least they gave me a big cup. Look, the cup is almost as tall as my head. Although, I guess it's a buffet. They're doing that because they want you to fill up on liquids. But let's go get some food, why don't we? All right, so first let me show you what the buffet layout looks like, not the seating aspect. So over there, they kind of have like some apps and then along the wall, they have all assortments of meats and savory items and starches and 
some like items to be carved and some to be, you know, freshly served. And then at the end there, they kind of have some crab legs. Over there, they have some uh, crab legs, I believe, although I cannot eat crab because I am allergic. So that is a big downside when you're in Vegas. You know, you can't partake in the famous Vegas crab legs. Actually, sorry, I was so far away. This is the better shot. They have some crab legs here, uh, you know, and I guess since I can't eat crab, I'm allergic. I'm really missing out on the bang for buck of this buffet. So if you guys ever come here and try the crab legs, let me know how they are. In general, they kind of have some nicer items on this section here. Like that was shrimp over there, like more expensive stuff at the end. And then they have some sushi here. You know, they put their nicer stuff at the end so that you fill up on the cheaper stuff first. So they have some sushi here as well. And then their dessert station is over here. This is their dessert station. So we cannot possibly hope to try everything. This is a buffet. And if we try many things, it might still be too much. So we're gonna focus in on some staples and some of the good stuff, and then we'll cast our verdict, why don't we? First, let's grab a plate. And actually, as far as buffet plates go, this is pretty generous. Buffet plates are like their own specialty, their own category. They're known for being small, so you don't load up on stuff and eat too much of their profits. And uh, yeah, the world is our oyster. So let's see what we got at the Wicked Spoon. Ooh, look at that. They got some pork char siu, cha shao. They even have like a little Asian section here with some pork buns and some spring rolls. So let's try these, why don't we? Some veggie spring rolls and a pork cha shao bun. Oops, I can't pick it up. Oh, it's coming apart. Salvage what I can. Well, those are some uh, tender buns, but they're a little bit too tender if you ask me. Ooh, and this is some cha shao, but just the pork itself, just the pork belly. So don't want to miss out on this. They got a ramen station here, show you ramen. So remind me to come back for this ramen later. I don't know if I'll be able to juggle it on this plate. So let's come back for that later. Let's grab a spicy tuna roll with eel sauce. One of these. Okay, so we said we were gonna try some staples and pizza is definitely a staple. Uh, this pizza is looking pretty mid to be honest, but we promised we would try some staples, so we'll give it a chance. This fried chicken looks pretty legit. I mean, look, it even comes in a little fry basket. And you know, I don't wanna bite off more than I can chew at all at once, but let's give this a try, why don't we? Let's just grab one of these fry baskets. We're coming from the New York area and wedge salad is of course a staple of New York. So I really, really want to put their wedge salad to the test. So let's give this a shot. Ooh, look at this. I'm almost, I'm running out of room. Oh, and wow, we grabbed a lot of stuff. So, you know, I guess these plates are pretty small after all. So let's eat this and then come back. All right, so we're back and we got a plate of some interesting assortments of items. And you know, we got some classics and we got some less conventional items. You know, it's funny, I promised I was not gonna get too many things. I said I was just gonna get the best or more interesting items and then try everything. But I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I guess when you're at a buffet, it's hard to resist the urge to try as many things as you can. So I guess let's just start eating. Let's go with the wedge salad. I don't exactly expect this to be New York Steakhouse level, but as long as it tastes good, I am satisfied. All right, a bite of the wedge salad. Mmm. So it looked pretty nice when it was on display. I gotta say, it tastes about as good as it looks. This is a pretty good wedge salad and you know, as good as it tastes and as fresh as it tastes, what I like most about it is how it looks. I mean, I know I cut a piece off of it there, so it's kind of ugly now, but it looks pretty appealing and beautiful. And the Michelin star sushi chefs, they say that you eat with your eyes first. So pretty good appetizer. Let's move further down our list. Let's do this extremely, uh, I don't know, maybe it looks better in the camera, but at least when it was up there, it didn't look super appetizing to me. I don't know, that's a very pasty looking back of the crust. You know, not much leopard spotting or char here, but we'll give it a chance, why don't we? At least it's got a heat bubble. Yeah, I'm sorry, that is not appetizing at all. I mean, just look, like that dough is almost like raw. Like it's so not charred. I mean, this is not even frozen pizza. This is like 
worse than frozen pizza. Kind of reminds me of like a thin crust version of the cafeteria pizza that I had in elementary school. So I'm sorry, no more of that. Maybe the spring roll will redeem the experience. Not bad. Not great either, but also not bad. I mean, the filling tastes pretty nice, the vegetables inside taste nice, and the outside is nice and pleasantly crispy. I like the color of it that it's fried in. Will this be the best spring roll you're ever gonna have? Of course not. But I would say this is probably better than most spring rolls at your more average Chinese takeout joints. It's not as good as like a good spring roll, but it's above average, I would say. Not bad. Let's try the mangled cha shao bun. And honestly, that does not look half bad. It's not bad, but it's not great either. I mean, I could see some people really liking this. I would say in some ways this is authentic, but the core flavor is rather sweet. Like, I feel like it's so sweet that it's almost made more for like an American palate than an Asian one. So, you know, it's not for me personally, but some people may like it. And let's see if the cha shao pork belly on its own is better than the one they make in the bun. And actually, this does not look bad. It's got nice color, got some char on its edges. If I can get my camera to focus, yep, it's got some char on its edges. It looks like it's got a good mix of fatty and lean. And let's just hope it's not too sweet. You know, that was definitely better than the pork bun. The cha shao itself was decent and tasted pretty authentic. A little on the sweet end, but still pretty good. But I gotta say, these Asian items are like average. They're like kind of acceptable standard, but I wouldn't say they're like fantastic. I mean, I don't know. I guess I can't really expect them to be as good as my favorite authentic restaurants. Like the fact that they're average might be good enough, but not really for me. Maybe the sushi though will redeem the experience. This is a spicy tuna, so let's give it a try. And it does not look half bad. Although one warning sign is that the touch of it is a little on the cold end. It's a little colder than I feel like it should be. Sushi should be more room temperature. You know, the sushi, the fish, I mean, actually tastes pretty good. And the spicy recipe they have for that spicy tuna, it works really well. The problem, though, is just that it's just too cold. Like, the rice and the seaweed is just so cold that, I don't know, it kind of masks the flavor of the fish. The temperature of sushi is really important. So, I gotta say, overall, these uh, Asian items uh, have kind of fallen flat. A little bit disappointing but maybe a good old American item will redeem the experience. A good old American fried chicken. And it does not look half bad to me, so let's give it a try. Breading looks nice and flaky. Uh, you know, it's not too oily, not too greasy. And the feel of it feels pretty soft and tender, I would say. Mmm, this fried chicken is excellent. If I got this in a sit-down restaurant, I would be very, very pleased with it. The inside, I don't know, maybe it doesn't look it so much on the camera. The inside of it is pretty moist. Yeah, see, look, the inside of it is moist. It's not overcooked, not stringy. It's nice and juicy and moist. The skin, too, just has great seasoning, great flavor. Okay, I guess my one complaint is, as you can tell by my fingers, it's a little oily, but it's okay. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. And the oiliness kind of adds some more umami oomph to it. It's greasy, so I wish that the skin was more crispy, but... The skin tastes good. Hmm, not perfect, but a good fried chicken. I gotta say, um... So far in this first round, we tried like an assortment of things and so far a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, some things were better than others. This wedge salad was excellent. The fried chicken was great too, despite its oiliness. Everything else was not really that great to be honest, but let's try some more things. Let's try some fancier items, the things that you really come here for. So 
Coffee break. Round two. So now that we've had our first go around, you know, we walked around the buffet and we know what they have, which is a thing that you should do, you know, make sure you know what they have and that you don't accidentally take some less good things just because it's in the front. One thing that I gotta get no matter what is some braised short rib bone marrow. I can't leave here without at least one of these. So let's just reach for and grab a delicious bone marrow and this can be quite pricey so I can't believe this is all you can eat. Hi, can I get a piece of the tri-tip and a piece of the strip loin? Can't say no to those. Thank you. What was that, honey? Oh, I said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Ooh, they got some pork carnitas tacos. Yes, yes, I will take one. Can't wait. Yeah, I love tacos. Okay. Okay, I love, I love carnitas tacos. Can't eat enough of these. Thank you for coming, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so we got our steaks, we got our bone marrow, and we got our taco. Uh, victory plate if I ever saw one. Uh, and angry mac and cheese, will this fit? Angry mac and cheese, I do like mac and cheese. You know, I don't usually like when anyone is upset at me or angry at me, but maybe they don't mean like it's literally angry. Maybe they mean like it's like mad good. Uh, I don't know, you know what I mean? So let's see if we can juggle all these. Let's head back because if I hold this, I won't be able to hold the camera. So let's head back with these items. And all right guys, we are back at our table with a more impressive looking plate if I've ever seen one. Now here we got our two steaks, well beef, you know. We got our two steaks and we got some bone marrow and we got a carnitas taco that the friendly man told me was the best carnitas taco. I don't know, best is a tall order. I don't know if this is gonna be better than Los Tacos number one in Chelsea Market. That's my favorite so far, having not had tacos much in Mexico or California or Texas, but it does look pretty good as does this bone marrow. This looks incredible. And then we got our beef, and you know how much I love beef and steak on this channel. Now this one is a roasted tri-tip, and this is a strip loin. Now strip loin is basically New York strip, I believe, and tri-tip is basically sirloin. I believe bottom sirloin. I gotta say, they look good. Um, especially the tri-tip looks good. The tri-tip especially just has like a nice pink color and a nice shine to it. Too often these roasted beef are well done and way overcooked and dry. The strip loin, I gotta say, it's got a nice color, but it looks a little bit more on the dry end, but we'll give it a chance. Let's try this succulent tri-tip first. You know, they really should give like something better than a butter knife to cut this with. Oh, you know, I don't usually like these roast beefs. Like I tend to be much more of a steak guy, like a grilled steak guy, but this is fantastic. Not only is it so juicy and moist and tender, the flavor of the beef is just amazing. It's got a good mix of both fattiness and leanness. It's a good combination of chewy fat and lean beefy flavor. Oh, I gotta eat another bite of this. I just have to, it's so good. I just wish they gave me a better knife to cut it with. Second bite. Mm. Outstanding. Just everything I said about it earlier, just remember what I said. Delicious flavor, great lean to fat ratio, tender as well, amazing. Let's try the other piece, the strip loin or the New York strip. And while this one may look more tough than the tri-tip. It's actually much more tender to cut. Look, even with this butter knife, like it's like just going right through like butter almost. Let's hope that tenderness translates into its flavor in my mouth. And it looks better from this angle, doesn't it? Maybe it's all about the lighting. Oh man.
Hmm. Okay, so, you know what, I was about to say that I actually preferred the New York Strip to the tri-tip, but I think what I said kind of rang true from the observation. Parts of it kind of are dry. The first bite was deliciously moist and fatty and just had great bark flavor, while the second piece was pretty dry, and I don't know, I don't know about you, but it looks a little dry when you look at the inside of where I bit. So I guess the New York Strip is not quite as evenly cooked. If you do eat the New York Strip, eat the parts that kind of have this skin, or not skin, that kind of have the bark. This bark on the New York Strip is just so fatty and well seasoned and, ugh. Overall though, the beefs are generally good. This one a little inconsistent, but amazing when it's good. This one amazing overall. Let's try some bone marrow. And does that just not look like a thing of beauty? Let's give this a try. Let's try some on some cracker. Okay, so they didn't have crackers to eat the bone marrow with. They didn't have bread either. They didn't really have anything, but they have these tortilla chips, which, you know, I guess they will kind of be close enough because I will say I'm not super impressed by the bone marrow despite how it looks, but maybe it will taste better paired with like a starch. All right, let's see if it tastes a little bit better on a chip. That definitely helped a little bit, and tortilla chips actually wound up being a pretty good accompaniment, believe it or not. Like the oily, salty crispiness of the tortilla chips, these probably homemade tortilla chips with the bone marrow was actually a pretty good combination, but let me tell you, I've had some decent bone marrows and this is not one of them. It's rather dry, to be honest. Like, I feel like bone marrow should taste buttery and rich and creamy, while this is kind of dry and I don't know, like, it doesn't have that creaminess that you want from bone marrow. Like, when you eat a good bone marrow, you want to be able to, like, you know, it's got to be, like, so smooth and creamy that you can, like, pretty much drink it. But, ah, uh, that was a letdown. That was supposed to be the highlight of this meal. But, unfortunately, I've got a bone to pick with you, marrow. Okay, last but not least, the taco. The carnitas taco. Hopefully this will redeem the experience. The ingredients on it are looking pretty fresh. The cheese looks nice and delicious. Pork is looking juicy and fatty. I get the feeling that this tortilla may be handmade, although it does look a little wet. You know, I hope that's just like salsa and not like grease or something. So let's give this a try, why don't we? The taco. Maybe it's the taco the town. All right, sorry. End the video right there. Unsubscribe. Mmm. Mmm. Very, very, very good. He said the best tacos ever. I wouldn't go that far. I still prefer Los Tacos number one in Chelsea Market, at least from my limited experience. But these carnitas are excellent. This is an excellent taco, and it all comes down to this marinated carnitas pork. Not only do they look delicious with a wonderful shine, they're yummy and oily, greasy, but not overly greasy, like the perfect amount of savoriness you want from a pork taco. And I was right, these tortillas are 100% being made in-house. You can just tell by like the feel, the look, and more importantly, the taste of them. They're not cutting corners, they're not from a bag. These tacos are outstanding. The only thing missing that can take this over the top is some fresh pineapple. Turn this into an al pastor taco. The oily, greasy pork combined with a sour and slightly sweet pineapple would have been a perfect match. But I think this taco is the best thing I ate all day at the Wicked Spoon. Very, very good. The guy did not lie. Muy delicioso. Oh, I almost forgot. The angry mac and cheese. And I gotta say, this angry mac and cheese does not look half bad. It might actually be mad good. Hmm. Looking a little dry. I thought it was just the I thought it was just the color of it, but very strange. Maybe it tastes better than it looks. Ooh. A little spicy though. Okay, so they call it angry mac and cheese because it's got a bit of a kick. 
But to be honest, maybe it's just not my cup of tea. Maybe other people like this. This mac and cheese, they got a good thing going with the inside. It's nice and creamy on the inside, but the outside is just so like hard and I don't know, like kind of like coagulated and crusty. It's not really my thing. If this is an intentional style, it's just not for me. Maybe I'm just ignorant and not in the know, but this outside layer is just so dry and I don't know, it kind of tastes like they just left this out for a long time which may have been the case. I mean, maybe it just kind of suffered like a buffet heat lamp death, you know? But if that's the case, I mean, ideally they would be, you know, cycling these out, you know, removing ones that have gone dry. So, ah, really, really disappointed. I'm getting pretty full after eating all that food. So I'll just get one piece of dessert and then I think we have enough to share our final thoughts on this place. BRB. All right, so I saw molten chocolate lava cake, and when I see something like that, I cannot say no. I can't remember the last time I've had a chocolate lava cake. I think I tried it at Domino's Pizza once, and I was extremely let down. It kind of tasted like they just took some brown bread and, I don't know, melted like a candy bar inside it. It was very off-putting. But I am sure this one will be better because after all, this is Vegas and this is the Wicked Spoon. And I'm sure they're gonna at least be better than Domino's Pizza. All right, let's see if it has that warm molten chocolate center. And it does. It doesn't quite flow like lava, but it is nice and moist on the inside. So let's take a bite of the molten center. Why don't we? Unfortunately, that's not really my cup of tea either. This chocolate lava cake, no doubt, looks nice and it's got a nice texture, a nice moltedness, but to me, it is just way too sweet. I have to be honest, despite its better appearance, it does kind of resemble the Domino's molten lava cake. Like this filling, this chocolate filling kind of is kind of just like chocolate syrup, like the kind of chocolate syrup that you have on top of an ice cream sundae. It goes good with ice cream, you know, because the cold ice cream kind of contrasts with the warm syrup, but it doesn't go so well as like a cake filling. You almost feel like the cake is like booby trapped. It's like you have some nice warm cake on the outside and you're excited to bite into it and then you just get this very in your face, overwhelmingly sweet center. I said candy bar for Domino's pizza earlier. It kind of tastes like a melted Hershey's bar or something. So, uh, unfortunately, that's a miss for me. But guys, I uh, think I've seen enough to render my final verdict. If you just look behind me, you'll see it's a beautiful restaurant. Like it's a beautiful buffet. These chandeliers are beautiful. They kind of remind me of like Chinese myth dragons and it's a huge space and the lighting is great. And what I meant to say is it puts you in a good mood to eat here. And there's tons of selections. I mean, there's Asian food, there's American food, there's Mexican food, and there's some fancy stuff. But I gotta say, for me overall, it's a solid buffet, but just like any other buffet, there's hits and misses. I definitely preferred the Bacchanal when I came here last time, the last time I was in Vegas. Now I did have a gripe with the price, but I really had no beef with any of the food they were serving. I thought everything when I ate here last time was fantastic. Wicked Spoon though, eh kind of hit or miss, kind of up and down. So while people say that the Wicked Spoon is the best buffet in Vegas, and maybe it would have been different if I could have eaten those crab legs, but in my opinion, not the best buffet in Vegas so far, that's still the Bacchanal for me. Although I need to eat there again on this trip and remind myself of the quality. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think of the Wicked Spoon? Do you think the Wicked Spoon is the best buffet in Vegas? If not, what's your favorite Vegas buffet? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. I uh, ate a ton of food for this review and that last item is, uh, it's, it's very rich and I feel like I need some fruit to offset it. So gonna get some fruit. So until next time, I'll see you later.